Hey, I'm Danny Fenton. Until recently, I was pretty sure that I knew who I was. Just an ordinary kid dealing with embarrassing parents and a nosy big sister. The girl I have a huge crush on and the huge bully who wants to crush me. But ever since high school started, the kid I thought I knew is starting to disappear. Danny Phantom. This morning at 11 o'clock, 10 central, only on Nick. In 2004, Nickelodeon had an incredible lineup of cartoons, with Danny Phantom being the newest smash hit for the network, as well as SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, and Jimmy Neutron all still running strong. All of those shows were great. But in February of 2005, one show came along that would dare to be drastically different from everything else on Nickelodeon, at the time or even after. And that show was Avatar, The Last Airbender. Avatar was created by two guys named Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konitsko. They're the two names you see at the beginning of every episode. Both Michael and Brian had worked together for quite some time, both having worked for an animation studio called Film Roman, who did work on shows like Family Guy, King of the Hill, and the more obscure Mission Hill that aired on Adult Swim. So these two were no stranger to working in animation. But when it came to creating something for a primarily younger audience, they didn't have much experience. In an interview from years ago, Michael had this to say about the inception of the series. We spread out all of our ideas on the table, and one of the drawings was something Brian had done. Among the first sketches by Brian was one of a young, bald boy with two companions, a cyclops robot monkey with an arrow on its head, and a polar bear dog who walked upright on its hind legs. Michael combined these drawings with something he was interested in, that being a man named Earl Shackleton, who in the 1900s led multiple expeditions to Antarctica. Michael was intrigued by the concept of humans attempting to survive in the world's harshest climates, and in combining this with the concept art Brian drew, the character of Aang was born, along with the iconic beginning of the series with Sokka and Katara finding Aang frozen in ice. Something that I've always really loved about Avatar is the world Michael and Brian created for the characters to explore. Pulling inspiration heavily from Chinese culture while adding quite a few fantasy elements gives the show an incredibly realistic feel. It's very easy to picture yourself in this setting and imagine experiencing the journey of traveling through this world. Something else the show does very creatively is its use of combining two real animals to make a fictional creature. The more iconic ones include the otter penguins Aang rides early on in the show, the badger moles that taught Toph earthbending, and the turtle ducks we often see in flashbacks with Zuko and his sister. All these strange and interesting creatures just add to the allure and the fantasy of the world. Of course, having an interesting world would be nothing if you didn't have solid characters to inhabit it, and in anime fashion, give them awesome powers to allow for some extremely entertaining fights. trio firstly consists of Aang. Aang is the last airbender in the world and also happens to be the Avatar. 
a being who gets reincarnated every few hundred years and is met to master the four elements. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. And use his abilities to keep balance in the world. A hundred years ago, Aang found out he was the Avatar at just 12 years old, and feeling immense pressure from this, fled from the Air Nomad Temple, and during a storm, freezes himself in a block of ice to keep him and his flying bison Appa safe. After he disappears, the ruthless Fire Kingdom begins to take over the world, conquering nation after nation, and murdering every airbender in the process. This brings us to our other two main characters in present day, Katara and Sokka. Katara is a novice waterbender still trying to get a hang of her abilities, and her brother Sokka is a hot-headed, goofy guy who, in the beginning, really only cares about keeping their small village safe from the Fire Nation. One day, they stumble upon a huge block of ice and accidentally open it up quickly realizing the boy they find inside is in fact the missing avatar they've heard stories about. Over the course of the show, the characters go through incredible growth, unlike any other cartoon on the network, not only strengthening their bending abilities, but also growing as people, maturing, facing their responsibilities, and learning how the world really works in other regions under the oppressive rule of the Fire Nation. We also meet characters like Prince Zuko, the dishonored heir to the Fire Lord. After losing in a battle against his father, he is exiled and commanded to not return until he's found the Avatar and killed him. Zuko goes through probably the greatest transformation of any character in the show, starting out as purely a villain who just wants to regain his honor and earn his dad's respect, but by the end, realizing the flaws with the Fire Kingdom and grappling with the fact that it's possible he's been on the side of evil his whole life, and ultimately, near the end of the show, deciding to join the people he's been trying to kill this whole time, and even teaching Aang firebending so he can defeat his father. You also have other incredible characters like Toph, who join to teach Aang earthbending and Uncle Iroh, Zuko's wise old uncle who's always trying to push him to make the right decisions. Avatar ran for just three short seasons, from February of 2005, and ultimately ending with an incredible finale in July of 2008. The finale episode, Sozin's Comet, was a massive success, pulling in 5.6 million viewers, which was a 195% increase from the same time in the previous season. So, with all this success and amazing feedback, Nickelodeon decided they wanted more. So, at San Diego Comic Con on July 22, 2010, it was announced we would be getting the chance to return to the world of Avatar with The Legend of Korra. Picking up 70 years after the ending of Avatar, this show centered around the next reincarnation of the Avatar, a waterbender named Korra as well as a few of Aang and Katara's grandkids who helped Korra on her Avatar journey. Unfortunately, the only character from the original we get to see is Katara, and they establish very early on that pretty much everyone but her has passed away at this point. For me and many people, Legend of Korra never quite reached the heights that The Last Airbender did. Maybe Avatar was lightning in a bottle, Maybe it had to do with, at that point in time, TV had a lot more options for cartoons with darker stories and deeper character development. But for me, I think it came down to the fact that Korra, unfortunately, was just never as compelling or interesting of a character as Aang was. Korra existing certainly doesn't ruin the legacy of Avatar The Last Airbender. Both shows can certainly stand on their own and have different things to offer for audiences. But what I do think The Legend of Korra and that awful live-action Avatar movie shows us 
is maybe when something good ends, it's best to let it be done, rather than dragging it back out to make something that, chances are, won't be nearly as impactful or important as the original. Thanks so much for watching guys. I rewatched all of Avatar recently for the first time since I was a kid and I really loved it. So I really wanted to talk about the series because it's very special to me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and if you didn't see my last video, ranking every Sony Pictures movie, I am in the process of working on part 2. It'll be dropping sometimes in early December, so please check that out when it comes out on my channel. I've put in so much work on both those videos, and it really means a lot if people watch them. And go watch part one after this if you haven't already. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.